welcome back to part 3 of my skateboard series. In this video I will not be covering any parts of the build, rather you will see a video of me riding the board, talking about its various features, uh, with some clips of the speed test and range test sprinkled in between. I hope you enjoy the video and perhaps learn something. I actually started this build, instead of start, well I started this build from a motor that I had lying around. And that would be the uh, Turnigy Trackstar uh, motor, which was used for like a, a 1 8 scale RC car. And the original controller motor combo from the box from the factory came with a power output of uh, up to 7 kilowatts, um, which is a substantial amount, especially for such a small package. Now, I imagine the efficiency at such a power output would be very questionable. Um, however, I've had excellent luck with this combo so far. Um, now I actually tried using a few different combos of uh, RC like controllers via for boats, planes, or actual RC cars. I had zero luck with getting any of them to work. Either the controls are way too jittery and unpredictable, um, or they would just blow up. Like I've, I've probably blown up three to separate RC controllers. Uh, so I would recommend don't ever go that road. Don't even try doing that. Uh, instead, get something that's actually made for a skateboard, which is what I ended up doing, and get a VASC. Or I would not recommend getting uh, such a high KV motor because, of course, High key KV motors, while well, requiring uh, less voltage to drive, um, require much more phase current, which is something that the VSC has a hard time with. Generally, the most you'd want to run with a VSC is 100 amps phase. Of course, battery amps and phase amps are two separate things. But yeah, 100 amps of phase current will get you done just fine. Um, but I actually ended up, to get the torque I needed out of this motor, I had to run it at like 180, 200 amps. Uh, which is more than a stock VSE can even handle. I mean, with the temperature protections, you're not really going to blow up MOSFETs or, uh, or anything like that. The only risk with, uh, to damage with the VSE would be the DRV chip, and that's a common failure. Um, but if you're careful, you can generally avoid that. And there's all kinds of forum stuff I, you need to read into to understand that. But uh, generally, you want to keep a conservative limit on your ERPM. And um, also, uh, avoid super high voltage setups because that apparently they don't like that. Um, but I actually had great luck with my low voltage setup uh, getting FOC to run, which on the older version of the hardware, which is what I'm running, tends to be actually quite risky. However, they say with a low ERPM and a uh, low voltage, you can actually have uh, much less risk in running FOC, which appears to be the case because I've had zero issues thus far running FOC. And honestly, the power delivery is great. Um, it still works very well, even without sensors. Uh, so I would say I'm very happy with the current setup, but if you were starting new, I wouldn't do it personally. I would start out with two VSEs, uh, two lower KV motors, and maybe a higher voltage pack. Uh, and that would get you the combo you need without any of the compromises I have to make. But the project, at the end of the day, what I have here, it still performs very well, and it's a very good piece of kit. And so as I said in the description in the title, a top speed of I think 34 miles an hour or about 55 kilometers an hour, which is faster than you want to go on any skateboard. Um, I don't have specifications for the acceleration, but I can tell you with such a light vehicle underneath me and having like four horsepower beneath my feet, the acceleration is more than I can handle. As for the range, I'm sure you can see it popping up 
uh, in the video that I edited in post, but I actually went out to a local high school around my area, um, Churchill High or whatever, and they have this concrete track. It's a 400 meter track, and I actually ended up doing about 85 laps around that. I had to get my mom to count the laps, and she had to bring in like a chair to sit in and water because we were there for so long uh, doing the test. And I did it at about 35-ish uh, kilometers an hour. Uh, so faster than you'd normally go in town or in city, uh, which would actually lower the received range. Because remember, um, the faster you go, your wind resistance actually becomes squared with speed, which means it increases exponentially. So going uh, 40 kilometers an hour versus going 20, will require way more than twice the energy. Um, so the slower you go, the better your range. And of course, I wouldn't typically go 35 kilometers an hour in the city. But I just gotta say, 85 laps on that thing, I had to take a break every 15. And my feet were like burning and killing me because of vibration from this board. Like, it, don't get me wrong, it's more than other boards, but realistically, this is gonna be a problem on pretty much any skateboard where you're sure you can put two hours of range on there for two hours of riding, but are you really gonna wanna do two hours of riding? No, of course not. It's unrealistic. So the range is, is more than you need. You can rip it heavy performance on this thing and just gun it and you'll still wear out before the skateboard does. You'll still have, um, your body will, won't be able to take as much as a skateboard can even if you've done it the whole way. So follow instructions and read forum posts and just understand you know, how to do this all safely beforehand, uh, you'll end up with a product uh, that's actually fairly affordable, especially considering what you're getting. Like, it's, like my final product right here, this thing is cheaper than a boosted board. Like, and keep in mind, like that's the leading industry kind of standard for electric skateboards. If this thing is cheaper than that by about, no, I don't got, I don't know, 50% or so. And at the end of the day, the range is like three to six times as much depending on what model of boosted board you're considering. So like I would say, and oh, oh and the performance, the power is just uncomparable. So at the end of the day, if you were to do, make one of these yourself, the the performance would just be unparalleled on the market and the um, price to performance ratio, so the value for your money, actually ends up being a few times better than the commercial standards. And on top of that, the initial cost to buy in and actually make the thing is lower still. So there's really no reason why um, if you have any interest at all or any capability in dealing with electronics, there's no reason at all why you should consider buying commercially a skateboard unless your money, unless you have more money than time, which is, of course for me is not the case. Uh, it's just, and it's cooler too. Like if you look at it, look at, I mean, look at a, a commercial like boosted board or um, maybe even a Raptor or something like that. And look at what I got. And this thing actually, it, it looks cooler too on top of it. Like, who else can say that their skateboard has so much power that it needs to be water cooled? Uh, pretty much nobody. Like, I'm probably uh, the only person in my entire city with a water cooled skateboard. And I just think that's so cool. It's just so cool, you know? Like, the range, the speed, the performance, it's all unmatched and unrivaled. You cannot beat this thing. And it looks so cool. I mean, I've sung its praises long enough. You can clearly tell how um, impressed I am with this project just in myself. Like, this is, I don't know. But honestly, although it's an incredible skateboard, and Although it's a lot of fun to ride and it's a quick way to get around, sure as hell beats walking. Uh, I, 
I gotta be honest, I need to sell this thing or something because I need to finance my other projects. Um, but I gotta say, this has been all, making this thing has been a lot of fun. The final product has been a lot of fun. I'm absolutely um, thrilled with the results. Uh, like, I don't know what to say, man. I, this thing is just impressive. Like, there's no reason not to do what I did if you're interested in this at all. And the best thing is, when you go fast, it literally sounds like a jet engine. Not as loud, of course, but it's got that style of sound, and it's just interesting. I actually think it's more interesting than like a, um, an inline four or something like that. This thing just has that a sound that's completely and utterly unique. It's there's really no um, nothing else like it. Quite like it that sounds like this. This is just so um, awesome. If you are somehow still watching, I just want to say thank you for following along in this series. I hope you had as much fun as I did. If you had any questions. Uh, post them in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer. See you next time.